Good evening once again. It is Thursday. We are hanging and banging. Artist on lockdown. I am Ron Onesti here in rock and roll heaven, St. Charles, Illinois, just outside of Chicago at the Arcata Theater with my two brothers on our weekly show where we feature some of the biggest names in rock and roll. So let me bring my first brother to the microphone. You know him from Dio. You know him from Last in Line. You know him from Black Sabbath. Vinny Apice, my brother. What's up? <laughs> How you doing? My brother. My uh, good, good. Hey, uh, are we what do you got think a the look. Seriously, we, we think this is a good look this week. Are we having a dress code now? Like, a, well, you gotta. Uh, you like you the, bust my chops every week at about the T-shirt thing. So, uh, and then Steve and Carmen said, you know, you gotta dress it up a little bit. So, look, I, I've got. I'm, it's like I'm going to a funeral. I got the grays on, but still. <laughs> that is something else. That jacket. Wow, is that? Wow. I, got my, I I have my shirt, and this one I have a, an official. Concert shirt, look at Kings of Rock and Roll, but I'm not as for Ario for for Dave, but I, I didn't wear it because I want to step it up a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, it looks good. You should maybe do this every week, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. I might do that. Maybe. I have, maybe. I have a bad thing. Actually, I might step it up next week. If I'm going down this road, I'm gonna start doing a Liberace thing. I got some cool stuff. So today, today's show is like the Sun Sons of Italy, right? You know what? With you guys, everybody's I mean, Italian. Sons of Italy, huh? With you guys, with you and Carm, it's always the Sons of Italy. But we got to find Ooh. out because I know Amato is, but Lombardo. I'm going to talk to him because I know he's got his Cuban roots. I don't know if there's some Italian in there, so we got to talk to him about that. Yeah, there might be some Italian in there. There's got to be. Well, let's bring our big brother onto the stage. Uh, so excited to see him. Uh, let's see what hat he's wearing this week. You know, from Vanilla Fudge, you know, from everything else. Take Carl, it off. Hey, where'd the hat go? <laughs> I just got the wig. Yeah, that's a wig. Yeah, Come on. yeah right. No, it's the, here's my hat. That's nice. You look yeah. like, uh, who's the guy? Um, that, that No, the guy who produced all the TV shows. What's his name? Uh, uh, not Lauren Michaels. I'm thinking of the other guy. Um, I'll think of it. He's got the hat just like that. <laughs> no, the, the, the I, I can't the... find I can't find the gray one. I did an ad for this particular show with the gray one two nights ago. Last I saw it was on top of my focus rights here, and now I can't find it anywhere. I looked in the car. There it is on, everything. It's on the symbol. It's behind you on the symbol. Oh my God. <laughs> he looked. <laughs> yeah, hey, I look anywhere for that. I look, it's I so look funny. everywhere for that. Here it is. Here, here it yeah. is. The, there, it, it, there it is. And look at Vinny's got a nice new jacket on. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Is that new? Is that new? No, I, I wore this once before. You know what? It's freezing in my house, believe it or not. Oh, really? Well, what's freezing in your house? 78? No, it's cold in here. It's today, the wind's blowing like crazy, and all of a sudden it got cold again. So, oh, sorry, guys. 80 cold. degrees down here today. Well, we'll nice. get that. We'll get to that. Nice. Every Yo. day, 80 degrees, man. Nice. Yes. Benny Ann, Neil Simon. That's what I was talking about. You look like Neil oh, Simon Neil with Simon. that. Hand. Oh, Neil Simon. Thanks, Thanks, Benny. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, bro. Well, everybody, we got, we, got a, we got a great show as we do. Every, I think it's week 38 now. I got to keep track of this stuff. I don't know. It's hey, just Rob, so cool. maybe you should unbutton one more button. You know, let the hair <laughs> Oh, it slipped. <laughs> Will you right? <laughs> one no more down what. here, buddy? No down matter here. what, you freaking bust my Let onions. The, a little week. hair stick out, you know. I mean, I, not, I dressed, I dressed down today. I wore a t-shirt. I yeah, he's not, all dressed up. It's yeah. not the hairs I'm worried about busting out of my shirt right now. I'll be you honest. notice my gold records are missing on the wall. What happened? Well, I, I, put, I, had to, I had to put up a black scrim so I could do my cactus videos yesterday. Ah, cactus so, chilling. Wow. Not yeah, a green black. screen? Yeah, Not black, green, green screen. or white is what they want. So. We were so close to having a cactus show, man. You're killing me, Carmen. We're coming yeah. back. We're coming back. We're yeah. going to do it. Well, the album's coming out April 2nd, so we're going to be doing stuff. No, uh, Well, here's the thing, guys. We've got uh, just a... Uh, no, Norman Lear, not Neil Simon. Norman Lear. That's yeah, Norman oh, Lear. That's, that's right. Oh, oh, that, oh, yeah, Norman Lear. All right. Yeah, yeah, he has, uh, does he have red hair like that, purple hair? I, don't, I hope nobody but has. My hair manages my shirt, see? That's really funny. That's, he actually used white out to get the white out of that. Thing. Yeah, right? All right. Anyway, big show tonight, guys. Everybody, we got Bill, we got Paul, Cosmo, Betty, Michael. I mean, uh, everybody that's been uh, supporting the show every week. Thank you so much. At the yeah. end of the show, don't forget, we Paul, are going to Paul. 
a My couple friend. of yes, a couple of questions uh, from the audience. So just put it on the chat, and uh, if it's a good question, we'll ask it. So big show tonight. Two guys, uh, just again, legends of rock and roll. You know, our first guest, you know him from Slayer, you know him from Misfits, you know him from so many other projects. Uh, a really cool guy. Again, thank you guys for giving the opportunity to do these things because I get to meet my heroes and these uh -huh. legends. Let's bring Dave Lombardo out to the microphone. Yay, Davey! Dave, so Dave that's, the question. that's the question. Dave's in What's the that? dark there, look. Yeah, oh, man. Black. We, we don't know black, where, man. what's behind there. <laughs> Dave, is, Dave is in the black. Dave, is, is your entire existence like black and, you know, just just everything from the misfits to <laughs> the background is all like, you know, you know the darkness seems to follow me and, and <laughs> I embrace it. Is. it. I'm okay. You go from okay with thrash it. metal to thrash background. I don't know what that is. You, you know what? I, Dave I had can't. What's that? It's if you had a turtleneck on, all you'd be... Was we'll able to see as a head? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the question, yeah. here, Dave, is: I mean, you know, music, sure, that's important. Whatever, Slayer, whatever, Misfits, okay. The main question, the mm. most important question. Hold on, hold on, drum roll, drum, drum roll. roll. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Well, important question: Are you Italian? Uh, yes, I'm part okay. Italian. Wait, hold, let me explain. Let me explain something. Let me explain. Something. <laughs> I know you my got two movies, Yes, well, my hard. grandfather, my grandfather was born on a ship in about in around 1859. He was born wow. uh, uh, on a ship on the way from from uh, from Italy to Cuba. But what happened? What's what's interesting uh, is that the first port. Now, I've I've realized, and after asking so many questions and and diving into to the last name and the history of the family. Uh, he was born on the ship, and the first port was uh, Puerto Rico. Th so that made him Puerto Rican when he was born, but he was uh, oh, wow. uh, born from a French mother, uh, last name Mesteller. And I, that name is very, uh, it's, it's not a common uh, mm -hmm. uh, French name, uh, but she was French, and the uh, father was Italian, Lombardo. And but, you know, since he was born on the ship and the first port was Puerto Rico, that made him Puerto Rican. But then they kept going on the ship uh, to, to Cuba. And my father was uh, was all my uncles on on my father's uh, my grandfather and the paternal side were all born in Cuba, including my sister, my my aunt. And uh, so on paternal side, it's French, Italian. And then on maternal is Spaniard. Uh, so, yes, wow. I'm, I'm a little combination. So you're I a just bit did of a one mutt. of those. Yeah, yeah, I'm a mutt, you know? <laughs> uh, not so, tonight. Not tonight. Tonight. No. Tonight, you're not. Italian. You're one of oh, us. Tonight, I'm Italian. I know amongst amongst <laughs> Italians, it's like, ah, oh, you're an Italian. What the heck are you talking about? So, you know, what do we, you're not Cuban, you're Italian. <laughs> We got right, another right. great Italian American that we're gonna bring. I, I hope I didn't check with Amato. Come on, we didn't even know. Right? Let's check. Since 1989, he's been with Ario Speedway, and again, another one of my favorite bands. It's exciting to bring him. Coolest guy, rock and roll legend, guitarist, right here, Dave Amato. Come on, Dave. Hey, 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 hey. And I'm Puerto Rican. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm 100 percent Italian. Come on. Hey, we're, and we're Come both on. from Ventura. That's right. Yeah, we just found that out today. That's awesome. Oh. Is there a little town in Italy? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Very excited. Each week uh, I get to, to, to hang with those two legends up there, Vinny and Carmine, and it's just uh, exciting to see you guys. Um, Real quick here, uh, Dave, uh, start us off. I mean, what's this which, whole thing? Which Dave? Here? Which Dave? Dave. Oh, good point. <laughs> Yeah, Dave, right. You got to Mr. Mr. Dave. What are you, are both, you know what? Any Dave that happens to want to answer this, what have you guys <laughs> been doing uh, what's, during the pandemic? Are you recording? Are you writing? What you been up to? Uh, Dave A or Dave L? Dave L. <laughs> Dave L. <laughs> okay. Oh, Dave L. Dave L. Okay. Uh, yeah, just um, I set up I, – I moved to Ventura uh, approximately two years ago. And uh, and I wanted to 
get into a house where I can set up a studio, set up some drums. And, um, yeah. and fortunately pandemic hit and made me just focus on everything, you know, all drums and recording here at, at home. Yeah. And I've been able to, uh, knock out some projects. I worked, I did a song for, uh, ice T that was the first song I did here, uh, which was a remake of colors. Uh, and, uh, let's see what else, uh, I worked on this really bizarre project, uh, Satanic Planet. Uh, so so it, there's been a lot of productivity, which I'm, I'm really fortunate and happy, you know, that things have been still, even with this pandemic, you know, I've been able to stay busy and productive. Yeah. How about right. you, Mr. Amato? No, we we've, we've, haven't been doing anything, really, you know. Um, uh, the Bruce Hall, the bass player lives in Orlando. Hey, there you go, Carmine in Florida. Yeah, yeah that's me. And then uh, uh, Neil, keyboard player, he's in Minnesota, freezing to death. But um, we, Who? yeah, exactly. Um, no, we, we haven't been doing really anything. I haven't really seen the guys in a year. We've just been been shut down and uh, you know locked. Lockdown. There you go. Yeah, and, Dave, and, yeah. and Dave Dave Amato didn't build a studio in his house, so no, I didn't. We, we already went through that when the phone call when I talked to him. Didn't do it. No. Yeah. I know, you know Ario is such a. I mean, usually seven to nine months out of the year touring, so this has got to really been nuts for you guys. We we tour all it all is. year. I mean, it's been. You know, I've been in the band for thirty two years, and I've never missed a year. We just go. And we just don't do it for the summer. We go like from January to December. We just, you know, have, wow. have a little breaks here and there, but we just go constant. It's been, uh, that's, that's the way it should be. You're right. I know. I know. Hey, Dave, just, hey, Dave, uh, Dave A, it looks like you need to organize that room a little bit. Clean oh, no, it's it up. kind of messy, huh? I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am amps all over the place. And I know. I see a guitar you know, hanging out. Today I, today I talked to Brad Gillis. Oh, did you? I love that. And he sent me a picture of his of his studio. He's got amps everywhere. He's on this <laughs> wall, on that wall, on that wall. He says, I got 120 guitars. I said, Who's that? Who Brad, Gillis. Wow. Brad Gillis. Brad oh, Gillis. Yeah, so oh, shit. He's going he's gonna to do the show, but unfortunately, he's got a problem with his rotator cuff, and we all know oh, really? that, right? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Well, yeah. I, I counted the other. I think I'm up to about 160. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. Seriously? Wow! Yeah. yeah. Well, you're not really into uh, into vintage guitars, right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, I like, like a lot of vintage stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. how many drums do you have, Dave? You have 160. <laughs> you know drums? what? Unfortunately, well, I have. Uh, I don't have many. I've uh, two. Uh, storage units at two different times in my periods in my life were broken into. So oh, I man. think probably five, oh, six drum kits wow. out of the first uh, oh, uh, storage unit wow. were stolen. It was cleaned out, everything, road wow. cases. Wow. And uh, Slayer's uh, rehearsal uh, uh, room that we were at in Riverside was broken into and Everything was stolen. All my classic oh, drum man. sets. Everything. Oh, That's so, the worst. Yeah, so I'm slowly building everything up again and wow. trying to piece together some of my old classic kits from, you know, uh, yeah. kits that I see online that are, you know, similar. I have, a, uh, I have, a, I have 160 pairs of drumsticks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have mallets. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh man! What about you, That's Vin? What you, how many you got, Vinny? I don't know. I got one in the in the studio room, and then the rest are in the garage. Well, there's a couple back here. The rest are in the garage and cases, which I can't take them down. That's just a waste. They're all yeah. sitting there. Now, what's the oldest? Like, what, <laughs> like your first drums or close to it? Un unfortunately, a uh, long time ago, I sold a kid I used on Holy Diver. Ooh. You know, so I, yeah, it wasn't such a classic thing back then. So, yeah, you know, it's his son's playing drums. I'll sell you the kit. I should have kept it. You know, that was a sure. Yeah, like me, with the, you keep me hanging on. The first kit I had on Ed Sullivan's show, I gave it to Vinny. And, 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 and Vinny destroyed wow. it. Wow. 
<laughs> you know, I got, not from Carmine, playing, not from playing. Listen Carmine to the story. had maple, maple drums. He got the maple drums, right? And he gave me these. That was Gretsch, right? That was the Gretsch, yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, I want the I want the maple drums too. So maybe if I rip the uh, what do you sparkle, call it the wrap yeah the wrap sparkling off. off yeah I can we finish them and stuff. So I thought that was a good idea, and I started ripping the <laughs> thing oh, off. Oh no, Ch chunks of wood were coming off with it. Like, <laughs> I was going, oh, oh. shit. And then yeah. uh, it was so bad, I had to like go to the store. I just bought some vinyl. I don't know why. Oh. And I covered. I ruined the whole kit. It was oh. Terrible. You know, I wanted to know. I'm. I'm not. My dad was a drummer. I'm not a drummer. But the whole double bass thing really like fascinates me. How does that? You know, how does that happen? Is that something you set out to do? Is that something you got to really? I mean, that is amazing. How that whole coordination. Um, how does? What's the evolution of a double bass player? Well, Louis Belson started it back in the 40s, and uh, in my day, it was uh, me, Ginger Baker, and Keith Moon were the guys that had double bass drum. And when I got double wow. bass drum, I just did what I did with my hi-hat on my bass drum, you know, which ended That's up- That's what I did too. Things. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the generations after me, like Dave and all these other guys, and the guys today are ridiculous with the double bass drum. I mean, yeah. I, I got this band, I'm, I'm, I'm co-producing, this guy's feet are like, and in yeah. between that, he'll go like, brr, 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 brr. crazy. How do you do that yeah. stuff? <laughs> I don't know, how yep. to, but that's how it started. And Louis Belson started it. Wow. And, yeah. And, uh, how about you, Dave? Is that yeah. uh, pretty much how it, you learned from the Ex elders? Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, I, I was inspired by uh, Filthy Animal from Motorhead. Wow. Uh, right. Uh, right. When I heard when I heard uh, one of the songs on their live <laughs> No Sleep Till Hammersmith album, it just blew my mind. And I felt uh, like, wow, I, this is where I want to go. I, I was a big fan of certain drum patterns that incorporated the, the bass drum and the hi hat. And I, I can't uh, explain it, but uh, and, and and all I and I and I figured those patterns out because I'm self-taught. But then later, when I got my drum, my extra bass drum, I brought in. Uh, I used the bass drum instead of the hi hat to create the the double bass pattern, and then it just went right. from there. Wow, um, very I gotta leave. To I gotta leave now. Yeah, I know. Leave <laughs> Why? No. <laughs> I'm one bass drum. One bass drum. He's feeling well, inferior still... right now. He's, he's but... suffering from double bass envy right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tried it. I tried it a long time ago. I put two bass drums up, and then I figured, ah, you know what? Uh, doesn't fit in the car that well. So. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's the reason. Okay. <laughs> I stick with the one bass drum. <laughs> You know, my, my kit that I normally use, I sold my car in L.A. when I sold my house to one of my roadies. And that drum kit of mine fits right in that one car. It was, a, it was an Altima. It was a big car. Mm -hmm. Put the two bass drums in the back seat, the snare drum and the floor tom in the front seat, and everything else in the trunk. I've done that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've been, doing, it. We've been doing interviews for this new Sabbath stuff coming out, remastered and and all this, and Tony's been telling a story of when I joined the band in it was 1980. Uh, I met Tony the night before, and he, we hit it off. So I went down, said, "Come down to rehearsal. We'll meet the rest of the band." Yeah. So I go down to SIR on Sunset, and I bring my four toms, uh, concert toms, so they're even smaller looking. That one bass drum and three cymbals, <laughs> and I go down to SIR. Tony's got four stacks and Geezer's got four stacks. <laughs> they set this little kid up and Tony was like, like all nervous that, oh my God, this kid, it's tiny, you know? So he asked me if I'd play double bass. I said, no, we only had four days to rehearse. So we went and played this big stadium gig in Hawaii wow. with that giant amps and this little bitty kit, <laughs> you know, the, it fit in my, I had a 67 Mustang. It fit in the car. Actually, there was room for more stuff that was so small, you know. <laughs> Concert times, you can go double up on them. But uh, wow. and then eventually I added aerial toms and more toms and more floor toms. And... Giant. 
Yeah. Yeah. What about what about Dave Amato? What do you fit in your car? Do you ever take your amps in your car? Oh my god! <laughs> I, I, I couldn't. I need a semi. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Ing Day. And I, I have about a hundred amp. I, I collect Marshall amplifiers too. I have over a hundred Marshall amplifiers. Oh my oh god! My god. god. The oldest really? one, Dave. You, you got to call Brad. Let's see, yeah, I know. You guys are the same. Oh my god! I, I told you, no, we we wanted to trade some stuff before a lot years ago. You know? oh, you did. He doesn't want. He didn't want to get rid of anything. You know. Yeah. What yeah. You, uh, where, do you, where do you store that? Where yeah. do you store all that? Uh, mates, mates storage. Oh, in, mates. In, oh in, yeah. Yeah. Oh okay. In, in, in the valley. Yeah. Bobby, Bobby and Mates. Yeah. That's Bobby. That's right. Bobby. Yeah, we, yeah, Bobby's we were there. Bobby. We were there when they started, like 1983. Yeah, Bobby. Right, Vinny? 80, 83. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. 83, 83. 84. Yeah. Yeah, when Actually, you were Paul, when you were with Ted, that, yeah. you, you suggested uh, he opened Mates, and it was just a rehearsal place. And Carmine suggested you should be doing Cartage too. You know, <laughs> it, it, right. it, diversify your business. Right. And. Uh, to this day, Bobby goes, man, I got to thank your brother all the time. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's a big part of business. Yeah, a lot of trucks. <laughs> yeah, there's big guy. I influence people I don't even know I'm influencing. <laughs> <laughs> You're That's funny. Funny. I, I don't remember yeah. that. I don't even remember that. But I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby know. always goes, man, your oh. brother. Good thing your brother told me to do that. Yeah, because he's a oh. big cartridge. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Now he is. What is your prize amp, Dave? Uh, well, well, we know it's we know it's Dave Amato. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if Lombardo answered that question. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I use like the mid '80s. I, I like these uh, Marshall, like right in the middle, right the mid '80s hands. But I collect the, the plexis, like from the '60s, like Carmine knows, you know, where it all came from. You know, uh, Jeff Beck and, and well, uh, you know, with Vanilla Fudge, Vinnie Martell had. A Marshall amp with six tens in it. Yeah, six tens. And it was wow. shaped like this, you know, it had like a triangle shape on the front. You've got three of them. You got three of them. They're eight tens. <laughs> they're eight tens. Two, four, oh, six. Eight ten. Oh, four, I thought four. it was six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Man, they're trebly. Oh man, are they trebly? Not bad. Are they twelve? The tens, right? Six tens. Tens. Yeah. yeah. I thought. Yeah. Just rip your skull off. <laughs> wow. Hey, Mr. Lombardo, you know, by the way, Vinny or Oh, that was nice, Dave. I like that. Yeah, I, I like that. Ron, that was that was yeah. good, Mr. Lombardo. Yeah, especially Mr. Lombardo. a man in a in a nice suit. You know, he's like Mr. Lombardo. A Pretty soon he'll go, sir, sir. He'll be going, oh, sir. Yeah. Well, you know, note to production. Let's not <laughs> multiple name people only uh, on these shows. Mr. Lombardo. Um Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um you know, obviously, we were talking a little bit about the roots earlier, but, you know, obviously, your Latin roots, um, how much of that do you think has an effect on the way you play, or if at all? Um, with um, immensely, when it comes to my drum rolls and syncopation, uh, you know, doing these drum rolls uh, that end with a syncopated end, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it definitely helps. Understanding... Uh, patterns and um, feeling music, uh, I think it's helped me a lot because, you know, those, those Afro-Cuban drum rhythms are very complex. Yeah. So yeah. being exposed yeah. to those at a young age, I was able to decipher uh, rock and roll music very, very easily. So, and, and I was able to, to play along to rock music and, and learn from the classic, you know, drummers. Uh, uh, and it, it's, it, it's very helpful. And I would recommend any student that, upcoming yeah. uh, uh, drummer to learn hand percussion because uh, that is the roots of rhythm, you know, right there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it, it very, it's very important and essential, I think, to all drummers. It just takes you out of the basic 4-4 four, four, uh, yeah. uh, approach. They say that it makes you a little more creative, more resourceful to, to understand that. Yeah, you, you know, you, you have a lot to pick from. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question for Mr. Lombardo. <laughs> oh. What room are you in? What room in your house are you in? I'm in the black my room. monitor room in the studio. Are you in the <laughs> studio? <laughs> the right room. And you have it's black behind. It's black behind. It's black behind you. Yes, it's yes. A, it's oh, my, wow. Okay. I think I see yeah, a guitar there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, He's making me feel better because the guitar's behind him. There's a drum, yeah. 
and has yeah, Nick's actually, is my wife's guitar. It's a, it, it's a it's a classical uh, oh, nice. guitar, Madeira, Madeira. Guitar. Madeira. Okay. I felt yeah. a little outnumbered here because three drummers and me. I know. So, no, 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 no. We have we're we're representing you here. Thanks, Mr. Amato. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Amato. Yes. Um, Mr. Amato. <laughs> Mr. Amato. Oh, my God. an attorney here taking notes and taking uh, depositions. Um, <laughs> Mr. Amato. Um, so, Mr. <laughs> one of, uh, I mean, one of my personal uh, favorite guitarists also, uh, Gary Richrath, he leaves the band 89. You come in. Um, he had a very distinctive, obviously, way of playing. Did you feel? I mean, did you did you did you try to kind of acclimate yourself to the way he was doing it? Did you try to bring in your own creativity, your own your own perspective? Yeah, I, I tried. You know, to honor the uh, you know the, the, some of the uh, uh, solos he you know he did the iconic solos. You know, if I, like I can't fight this feeling, if if I did it my own way or something, they'd be going like they'd be throwing right. throwing uh, rocks at me or something. You know, so yeah, I, I just try to. Um, you know, honor him, and there's a couple of songs like uh, "Back in the Road," which is Bruce Hall's song. I can stretch out a little bit and you know be me. So I just kind of finessed it that way. It wasn't really difficult you know, for me. Just you know, as long as I respected you know some of the iconic solos, and and uh, and of course I I, I was for the band because I did have Les Pauls and Marshalls, which he used, and and that's the kind of the signature sound. I did mm -hmm. try when I first joined try to. You know, because I, I would play strats too, Fender strats, and you, you, know, you try to put a strat on one of those ARIO songs, it just sometimes it just doesn't work, you know, the stretching of it, you know. Well, a question, Dave, Mr. Yeah. Romano. How many <laughs> guitars did you have back then when you joined? One. Uh, no. No, he had Two. some 1950s pieces. <laughs> I had a, yeah. Yeah. Well, I started really collecting it like '89 when I joined Ira. Really collecting, oh, okay. Some new Les Paul, some new Strats, Tellys. You know, I maybe a dozen, maybe probably probably a dozen from Nugent. Well, I was I had a, you know Nugent. Yeah, and that was my next question. How was it playing with Nugent? Yeah, it was fun. I loved it live. Well, you did. Uh, I know. I know. What a fun man. Huh? What oh, a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about double bass, the first drummer I played with Nugent, we played the Texas champ Tommy Aldrich. Talk right. about Oh yeah. About oh. Some, yeah. Going, man, that guy had, you know. Yeah. That was after I played with him, I think. Yeah, 85. Yeah, yeah. My, I played with him 82, and that was great because, you know, it was like, for me, it was perfect tempos for double bass drum, you know. Right. Turn a rock, turn a rock, turn a rock, turn a rock, turn a That's it. Right, that's awesome. awesome. But yeah. you know when you you're playing with Nugent, you go from Nugent to like Cher. I mean, you know, is, was it was it you went on tour with her? Was it very different? I mean, <laughs> it, it would seem. I mean, oh yeah, right. Totally. Uh, yeah, you know. I, are I, you I, are you talking to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can just see Vinny playing with Cher. Oh it's my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't very. You know, it wasn't very hard, really. You know, um, she was she was going out with Richie Sambora at, at the time, so it was it was lean more rock, wow. you know, because she, she was going out with him. So, and I then didn't even know I didn't even know she went out with him. I knew she went out with Les Dudak. Yeah, Richie. So wow. Richie, Richie used to hang. And then she married. Did she marry Gene Simmons too? I don't Who know. Did she marry Ron? I, I thought I she married Vinny for about twenty minutes. Uh, I, no, I thought she married Gene Simmons. Oh, well, she just went then over. I played in her band. She oh. divorced me. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just went out with him, I think. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, she didn't marry him. Yeah. Uh, maybe she went out with him. Yeah. yeah and then, I remember Les Dudak pulling up to the motorcycle with Cher on the back at the record plant. Okay. You know, L.A., you know. Well, Vinny, she heard you were a hard banger, and then she found out you were talking. She was talking about drums, and that kind of messed up. Uh, Hey, one of my original websites said, Vinny Apathy, one of the loudest drummers in rock. Right. No love songs, no unplugged shit, no uh, acapella, no ballads. no ballads, no problem. And Carmine said, no work. <laughs> <laughs> that's, before, that's before he got See that. Oh, my God. Wow. Real quick, Mr. Amato, about about the Rich Rath thing. You know, one of my favorite things is the live album with that flying turkey trot. Do you 
Is that part of any of your repertoires? No, we don't do it. No, I didn't do turkey Come trouble. On, I'm begging you. No, that's kind of sacred, you know. That's that's for yeah, no. Gary. You know, I, I I don't want I don't want to touch that. You know, <laughs> I kind of figured that would that would be it. Um, Miss, I got to do this Mister thing. This is oh, pretty, this is awesome. awesome. And <laughs> hey, you know what? It says Don <laughs> on it. It says Don. I get Ron on this. It should be Don on this. I know Don. Hey, Ron, are you <laughs> selling those store. jackets at merch? You know why are you bust? I'm getting I'm getting emails right now. They want to buy that jacket. A couple of people. So okay, now here's the thing. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I thank you. It doesn't right? come in brown or whatever. The, All right. So wait here. I don't know. You could here. So let me get it. This is custom made. Okay, by my father who passed away nine years ago. Today is his oh. birthday. Oh, and, oh wow! Oh, my dad nice was a tailor from Italy, and he made the jacket, the shirt. He made the shirt. So in his honor, I've got so happy, happy okay, a happy birthday, Mr. Birthday. Onesti. That's okay. right. He would have been nice. Yes. Now this this hat is custom made also. Okay. <laughs> I got a feeling. Like I got a feeling. So is this one? This is custom made. <laughs> yeah. See, Dave, you guys are killing me. <laughs> we, Dave's, yeah. Um, you know, um, Mr. Lombardi, what was going here? Where's the Mario shirt? Where's the Mario shirt? Yeah, where's What's the like? Ario shirt? Hey, My shirt? There it Dave. is. Uh, there's, there, where's Dave's shirt? Dave I have that shirt. underneath if you want me to show you. No, we don't want to see that. Where's, this is Dave's shirt. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, the other Dave. The, the other Dave. The, the Mr. Ah. Porto. Here, this is a yeah. Slayer Misfits. No, uh, I didn't send him a shirt. <laughs> So Dave, you know you you, you have uh, usually he makes his own shirts, so don't worry about. It. Oh, okay, good. He's not lacking shirts. They stick right on those shirts. I'll tell you. Ah. <laughs> now you've had three departures from Slayer for various reasons, but one of the reasons I thought was kind of cool is the fact that you yeah. wanted to be with your firstborn child. Yeah, that, that, yeah, those, that those was, kinds of that was come to play with music. Right. I mean. That's, that's like respect right there, buddy. Who does that? Well, that was, yeah, that was back in 91 before, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, being a rock star and a father was cool, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, I got a lot of heat from band members, you know, and, and, uh, but, you know, I stuck to my guns and it was important and, uh, you know, I'm glad I did because that, that little boy and I are, are yeah. best friends. And uh, yeah, as well right. as all, you know, all three of my kids, you know, we, we have very good, uh, you know, conversations, we keep tabs on each other. And uh, so even though they're all grown up, I mean, that my son, he's, he's going to be now 28, wow. uh, you know, 27 or 28. And my youngest, uh, my daughter, she's, uh, she's going to be 21 this year. So, yeah. Any, yeah, so any of happened. them play music? Any of them into music? Uh, they play. My my oldest son, he's a engineer uh, for TV shows for the production company for Viacom. Have you heard of Viacom? Yeah, oh, awesome. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah. So he works for them, awesome. and he does a lot of uh, you know uh, mixing on the side, you know, for his brother's band. My my second oldest son, he plays drums and plays piano. But oh, cool. he also, as you guys, everybody knows, the music industry is difficult to tap into. And so yeah. he's, uh, he's really good at business. And now he's, uh, he manages and runs the West L.A. Uh, Guitar Center. So Ooh, he, ah, he works nice, there. Nice. And so he's doing really well. And my, my daughter, she's a vet tech, veterinarian technician. Uh, yeah, you tell uh, me that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. so they're, yeah, they're doing good considering their father's in – in death metal, black metal, and whatever thrash metal band. <laughs> thrash metal. You're the thrash dad. Yeah, and, and darkness always seems to follow me. What, what happened? What, what happened when you when when your kids were in school and you had to go like for parents' day up there and go? This is my dad. He plays with Slayer. You yeah, know, I I lived in a you know out in the high desert, and so people. Where'd really, you live? Where'd you live? Uh, up in uh, Victorville, Apple Valley oh, area. Oh, uh, I, I yeah. lived in Palmdale for a while. Okay, so you were at the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I really, I was very inconspicuous. I never really, you know, talked much or flaunted or anything like that. <clears throat> I was very low-key. 
And nobody um, recognized uh, you ever, the teachers or not really. some of the parents? No. no, not really. Lucky. No. I know. Yeah, that's lucky. That's lucky. <laughs> well, you I, I have change a lot. Uh, you know, I grew you would think the parents. kid you think you think the kids would say, Yeah, my dad plays with Slayer and they were have proud of you. You know, like my kids used yeah. to do that all the time. You know, I go into the school, I was always twenty yeah. years older than the other the yeah. other you know, that, that well, was twenty you, years older than the other parents, you know. Well, you know what? Well, it's that, funny. It might have worked out for you a little better than me because you know Slayer had a very dark undertone. Yeah. And so anything having to do in this very, uh, you know, Christian, you know, world, yeah. Yeah. you know, you know, you kind of kept it quiet. Yeah. But if you had the yeah, choice, if you think about it, if you had the choice of bringing, you know, your dad from Slayer or your dad from Vanilla Fudge, what would work better, right? No, well, Vanilla Fudge. Vanilla no, it wasn't Fudge. Vanilla Fudge. It was, it was King Cobra, cactus. Blue Murder, you know, oh, Cactus. Man. Vanilla you Fudge, know. they think he's from Baskin and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, I went to church a long time ago in uh, Sherman Oaks. And my wife at the time introduced me. We the priest was outside. He goes, Vinny, this is Vin Vinny. And he goes, Oh, Vincent, what do you do? I said, I play with Black Sabbath. And he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You out. Yeah. <laughs> Ceiling's yeah. coming down. You know, one Vinny, of the guys I have a question. I have oh, a question for you, Vinny. Um, what's that? Back, yeah. I, I remember seeing Dio. I just want to know it. I'm sure I know it was you on drums. Uh, uh, but I just want a confirmation. I saw Dio play uh, uh, Long Beach Arena, and I, I, I can't remember if Fast yeah. Way was opening up. Was that you? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. fantastic. Awesome. I, <laughs> I just well, needed a confirmation a on that. No, it was fantastic. I'll never yeah, forget back it then, because I said to place, myself, yeah. I said to myself at the time, I, I, I I'm going to be on that stage one day. I'm going to play, you know, <laughs> you cool. know, on stage like that. So it was a bit inspiring. So we might have played the, some festivals together, you know, in Europe or um, something. I kind of remember if uh, I I don't remember, but I I just I remember, remember seeing that show, that Dio show, and, and yeah. you know, I'll, I'll never forget it because uh, Dio went up and did his, you know, his little horns yeah. going like yeah. that up to where I was sitting yeah. in the low seats. So I was, uh, I was inspired. Did you ever play Long Beach uh, Arena? Well, thank you. Did you ever play there? <laughs> yes. Hey, yes. You did. I played, I played there, there once, only yeah. once. I played there once with BBA in my life. Only once. Ah, that was a cool yeah, place. One time for me. Yeah, it was a cool place. Yeah. I remember going no there more. one time to see, remember the group Angel? Yeah. yeah. Yes. They were like, they had all the theatrics. I went with Paul Stanley. Uh, he came wow. in my, I had, a, I had a big old Jaguar at the time. We pulled in the back. And I went with Paul, and it was really a funny day because we, me and Paul were out, and that's when they used to wear the makeup. So nobody knew, you know, what he looked like. And I was playing with Rod Stewart and all those big videos and stuff. So we're sitting in the aisle and in the in the row, and, and there's a whole bunch of fans over there pointing to us, thinking, you know, pointing to us. I'm going, oh, man, they recognize Paul. And they all came over to me for an autograph. They didn't even know who Paul was. <laughs> I thought that was so yeah. funny. That's that awesome. Hilarious. That was hilarious. Mr. Amato. Oh. I was going to ask Carmine. Yeah, we played a lot of gigs when I was with Nugent with Blue, um, your, your, your Ben, Blue Murder. Didn't we? <laughs> King Cobra. King Cobra. King Cobra. That's right. Yeah, King I, Cobra. I, yeah, we did King Cobra. Yeah, together. Yeah. We did a lot of, yeah. lot, lot of stuff together. Yeah, yeah, we did a lot with the New Japan. I know. I love, I love Ted. Ted is such a character. He's such a good guy. Oh, he still he's is. Been on, he's been on the show two two times already. Oh, has and, he? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he calls me on my birthday. I call him on his birthday. I mm -hmm. told him I, I I bought we bought a couple of pistols down here. You know, he's like, oh, he, he's on the phone telling me what to buy. You know, <laughs> he's, he's just a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's doing, yeah, exactly. he's doing an auction. He's selling like cars and guitars and guns and oh, and, he's, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> crazier yeah. now than he's ever been. Really, he's totally. Yeah. Lost, I think. Hey, Carmine, I mean, didn't you eat? Uh, didn't you eat a buffalo burger at his house? I did. <laughs> oh, this is a horrible story. Ah. You know, oh, first of all, Ted said <laughs> I, was staying, I was staying at Ted's house, the little farm he had in Michigan. 
Yeah, yeah. I was uh, there. They had the rehearsal place in the in the garage, like the garage, yeah. In the warehouse and the warehouse, whatever it was outside. Yeah. And you know, and you sleep in. I slept at his at his house. I don't know if you slept at his house. On the couch. On the couch in the room with all the heads. With all the yes. Yeah, right. Oh. I woke up at three in the morning, feeling like. Somebody's looking at me, and I look oh. up. It's all the heads of all the animals, all the yeah. eyes. That's so cool. yes. So I said to Ted uh, the night before I went to bed, he said, well, "I'm going to get up early and go hunting." I said, oh, "Maybe I'll go with you." He goes, well, "Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up at five in the morning. I'm going to be in outside the house by about six. I'm going to bury myself in a bunch of wet leaves and wait for the deer <laughs> to come. I might have to wait two hours." And he had that beautiful uh, girl, Pele. Yes. Uh, his girlfriend. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. I said, you know what? I think I'll stay home and have breakfast with Pele. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll stay home. <laughs> and then that night, she served burgers, you know? And I took a bite and I said, whoa, this looks really well done, you know? It's like really dark. I said, well, it's really well done. She goes, oh, no, that's not beef burger. That's a buffalo burger. And you oh, know what? Yeah. I have a big buffalo head over the dining room. Uh -huh. it was, it was from that? And I look, is that it? He goes, oh, no, Ted says, no, that was, that's old. This is fresh. I know, the I burger can't. by him is <laughs> I can't eat it. Problem. You're having a burger that's attached. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, one well, of the guys I that we've, um, I couldn't. One of the no. guys here at the Arcada that we love, you know, very, very much, played here all the time. I actually did a backstage cooking segment with him. It was oh, with, yeah. uh, one of our favorite guys, Eddie Money. So Dave, oh, oh, yeah. He yeah. a uh, tribute Eddie. show. And uh, can, tell me about that because that, I didn't see that. It must have been uh, an incredible night. Oh, it, it, yeah, we did it, what, last, uh, was it last February, year? February, a year ago. January? Yeah. February. Uh, I didn't even know about it. I would have come. Yeah, we played it here right in Thousand Oaks, uh, like Civic Center over here oh, wow. in, in uh, Ventura, Dave, in Ventura. Yeah, yeah. I lived there. It, it, it was it was incredible. I mean, he he came on and we did uh, two tickets to paradise. I think a couple of a couple of his songs and 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 he sang and his his daughter sang and and um, it, it was just a great night. Um, who else was there? Uh, Richard Marks. Richard Marks yeah. came up with us. You know, we oh, learned yeah. a couple of Richard Marks songs. <laughs> and we were kind of the, the band, you know, and Richard just came and sang. Amazing voice and and it was just a just a brilliant night for. For Eddie, you know, we, you know, we when Eddie when Eddie did his first album, he did it with Andy Johns, right? Yeah. Okay. And he did it at Cherokee Studios after we did it with Rod. In other words, we'd work from Rod from twelve to eight or ten, and then Eddie would come in afterwards, <laughs> and and he would work with with Andy, and Two Tickets to Paradise. All those songs were recorded at that point, you know. Wow. And Eddie was like a New York guy. We come up with, "Hey, come on, what are you doing?" Hey, Eddie, that's like, <laughs> it was really fun, you know. I was then, yeah, great. Yeah, no, it's just great, you know. You know, seeing the beginnings of that, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's sadly missed for sure. Oh, yeah, good guy. What a what a warm. I tell you, he was a guy. Like I, I do a bunch of you know corporate events too, and you know how these corporate events go. You go, you do your thing, and a lot of them are drunks or whatever. You know what I mean? You just gotta stay back. He said, he goes, who are your sponsors? Who are you guys paying the bill here? I said, are well, those guys there? Those guys? Come on, let's go out in the audience and go schmooze them. Uh, I'm like, Eddie, are you kidding me? And this is when his commercial just came out for the insurance or when he's doing yeah, the yeah. TV sure. stuff. Everybody knew him. It's just a just a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah, always, always a joke. You know, he, he opened for REO a, a lot, you know, uh, back in the 2000s, 90s or something, you know. And, and he'd come up to me. He goes, hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. <laughs> I used to, you know, I used to play this, all these gigs, you know, for the chicks. I love the chicks. I used to play it for. Now I do it for living room furniture. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> good show. I didn't go out and <laughs> for living room That's funny. I could see him yeah. say that. I could see him say yeah, right. that. I know. Yeah. We were driving. We we're doing another event in uh, at the uh, in Miami, or Orlando. We we're driving down. He goes, "Stop the car." He goes, "I want that." It was like Popeye's chicken. So he made me drive through the drive through the wrong way. So he came <laughs> by the window. He was in the passenger side. And we're <laughs> face to face with the cars in the drive through. But he's all, they're saying, I'm, he's going, hey, look, I'm Eddie Money. You got any chicken for me? So they kept throwing all this chicken in the car. People are facing us. We're 
We're holding up traffic the whole time. He ate like a monster, chicken all over him. Was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sounds like they, me at White Castle. <laughs> oh, I just oh, White Castle. White Castle. <laughs> I, bought, I bought White Castle in the produce department of the store, and I ate two of them yesterday. Ooh. I, had them in, I had them in the fridge for two months, and I got. I'm gonna have they the last couple forever. Of White but they were, <laughs> right. they were they were hey, is there a, is there a White Castle up in Ventura or something? No, no. Uh, Only when I go to the Midwest no. and back. It's in an Alberta. Yeah, right. In yeah, right. That's yeah. it. They did have they did have a few White Castles. I don't know. It's maybe the late '70s in mm. LA. There was like one huh? or two. You remember yeah, that? Yeah. Many? They did. Oh, yeah. They got they got them in and Vegas. They closed. No, they closed. Vegas, they got one yeah. in Vegas. Yeah, they got one in a hotel in Vegas, if I remember right. Yeah. But they, yeah, they were the first chain. They were the first hamburger chain. Those crazy. Tell them, tell them uh, what Ozzy did with them. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, yeah. He went off of a White Castle burger? Is that what you no, we, no, we went, we went to uh, we play Nassau Coliseum. So me and Ozzy were the last ones to leave. We were in the limo together. So we're driving. goes, hey, call him. I'm bloody hungry, mate. Is there anywhere to eat? You know, we're coming down. <laughs> Four four ninety five, and I'm thinking, what are you gonna eat? It's like one in the morning. I said, Oz, oh, there's this place called White Castles. You want to go in there? <laughs> and they go, what are you? Goes hamburgers, the little hamburgers. They're good. It goes okay. So we pull into White Castle with a limo, right? I get out. I got hair like this. I got a black fur coat on. It's winter. Ozzy's got a mink coat on, and his hair is all streaked and everything. We walk into White Castle. The whole place turns around. We get out of a limo. We walk into White Castle, the whole place turns around, looks at us. We order our White Castle, take it in the car, we eat it, and he loves it. Two nights later, we're playing the garden. I go backstage, the whole place is catered with White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. It was awesome, man. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> That's a good one. You said, uh, uh, Dave, you said that Eddie uh, opened for you. I mean, you know, uh, uh, so many of the shows that uh, Ario has done has been packages with so many other bands. Is, is there a, like a, a like a certain band you guys are like <laughs> the the the, uh, um, the fraternal aspect of the brotherhood of all these bands is out there? But is there one particular band you guys are like? Yeah, uh, us and Sticks. Oh, yeah. We've been doing, uh, you know, package deals with uh, Dixon Ario for since 2000. We started. It. Wow, that's a good. That's a good show. Yeah, yeah. We, we, do it, we do it like every, you know, it seemed that every two or three years, and we thought we would wear it up, but then just the promoters go and the people just come, you know, with the songs, and then you know we we put somebody else together. Like we had the last time we did it was uh, uh, us Sticks and, and Don Felder. Don Felder opened the show, and it's just wow. all hits. You what know? is that? About 80 hits? I mean, yeah. what is that? It's, it's a four-hour show? Yeah, it's all yeah. hits. And I, get to, I get to go up. I had to go up there. Had to. Not had to. He invited me up to do Hotel California for like wow. 50 shows. I played I played the Joe Walsh parts in Hotel California. That was wow. amazing. Wow. Was oh, nice, nice. So that's his signature song he wrote. I mean, yeah. he, he, he wanted me to play it with him. Like, really? You sure? Yeah. That's a trophy wow. right there, Dave. That's a trophy. Yep. I, mean, I was like, you know, I love Don Feller. He's yeah. amazing. What a, what a, yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's a great storyteller, too, you know, and, and he's not sour. I mean, maybe he's off, you know, but in, in the show, he's very much pro the whole Eagles, the whole transition. It's just a very positive experience with Don. He's, he's my friend here now, and I, I love the guy. He, he's just uh, just allowed me That's to awesome. do that. highlight of my whole whole career playing hotel California with them like 50 times, 50 shows. Oh. No kidding. My gosh, what a trophy. So Dave, um, you know, Misfits, uh, Slayer, Mosh Pit, all kind of the same kind of <laughs> words there. Is there ever a time when you were sitting back there um, behind the drums and you're seeing something happen in front of you, you're like, holy crap, this is really going to be dangerous? Uh, well, <laughs> It probably, it probably there were a couple shit. times. There were holy a couple shit. times. The Felt Forum uh, in in New York City. Uh, yeah. The Slayer played there. I believe it might have been eighty eight or eighty nine. Well, the fans started to rip the cushions out of the seats oh. and started throwing them. 
And wow. next thing you know, everyone was throwing seat cushions and ripping them out <laughs> and, and just destroying the venue. Oh, and, um, you know, that was, that was insane because not only did I see these seat cushions, but uh, the foam particles and oh, the right. dust was yeah. just thickening the, the air in the room. And uh, that was pretty intense. And there was another time Slayer played, I believe, 86. We had wow. just released Rain and Blood. And we were playing the Hollywood Palladium in, in Los Angeles. And there were um, these mosh pits. From my view, there was the huge mosh pit, mosh pit in, the, uh, in the middle. But then there were two other ones, you know, further out. And from my view, my perspective, it looked like Mickey Mouse. You know, you got the big round face and then the two ears up on top going like this. <laughs> you know, that was, that was, that was striking. I, I was just like, wow. But, you know, danger, eh, not really. Uh, I, I, mean, I got a danger story. If you want to hear <laughs> tell it. me, tell me. That's with Jeff Beck, BBA. You know, we used to travel with two American flags and a British flag. So we're in Hanover, Germany, 1973. And we had the flags up. After the second song, it started saying, take the flags down. <laughs> right? It was a very political city. And we, so Jeff said, we're not going to take the flags down. It represents us. And, you know, if you guys keep doing that, we're just going to leave. So somebody throws a bottle at the stage. Oops. That was the end. So we left. There were so many bottles thrown at the stage. Oh, my gosh. Glass that thick on the stage. And then I saw one guy throw a bottle, and it flung, it broke, and stuck into my shell on my tom-tom. Oh, wow. And I, got, and I had one of these big Afghan coats on. I got so pissed off, I picked up a bottle, and I threw it at the guy. And oh, my, really? roadie gra my, my roadie grabs me on and says, get off the stage. Get out of here. <laughs> and if you look at the back of the BBA album, you'll see a piece of gaffer tape on my tom-tom. That's from the hole that the guy made with the bottle. Wow. wow. Well, come on. As a surprise, we have that guy here today. <laughs> here he is. <laughs> He's got one eye and half a nose, but let's bring him in. He's a proud Italian American. Let's bring him on. Hey. Wheel him on. Wheel him on. Wheel him on in the chair. <laughs> okay, you, this show's getting too. This show's getting too funny. I got to yeah. say. <laughs> well, I was talking to Dave uh, off camera here at uh, Lombardo. Which, which Dave? Lombardo. Okay. Uh, uh, it was just a hey, Mr. Yeah. Lombardo to you. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lombardo. Um, just prior to the Chicago Riot Fest reunion with Danzig and Jerry and everybody, um, uh, Jerry brought a. Uh, I'm going to say a version of the Misfits. He did a Misfits show at my place. And my places are 900 seats, you know. And I don't have a whole lot of thrash metal. I'll be honest with you, you know. It's the Eddie Money shows and that kind of thing, um, which is amazing. But they told me, I see Jerry said, you know, they had to be really friendly with Jerry. And he said, you know, you got to have like a mosh pit. I'm like, mosh pit? Like 900 seats. We took out seats. And I'm telling you, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with mosh pits. The scariest thing about it, the girls were out of control, Mashin. Mm. Unbelievable. Throwing the guys in the air. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yeah, they get into it. They do. Oh. Mashin girl. You know. Yep. Wouldn't want to date one of those girls, that's for sure. Well, you certainly no. <laughs> don't see a mosh, you don't you don't see a mosh pit at an REO show, right? No, I was gonna say no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Hey, you know, I, we talked about family a little bit before, um, and you know, on this show, we've talked about the, I don't know what we call her, uh, a piche, a piece, or apice mom. We've talked about her recipes and stuff, but we haven't heard, heard a lot about your dad. Uh, what was uh, your relationship, or what was was he really influential in your music, uh, you guys? No. Well, he, he, hey, he, he, drove you, he drove you to gigs when you were yeah, starting. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, he'd drive you around in the car. And he always, his claim to fame was he played sax for about three minutes. Right? <laughs> you know what? But he was a good, he was a good dad. I mean, he worked He was a great off. dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never complained. And uh, he didn't even say curse words like yeah. me. And he used I don't to, say them either. And he used to be a cop at one point. And I remember him. Practicing with his empty gun and shooting on the wall. You know, wow. Vinny was probably too young for that. 
Then I'll we used to go that. to Coney Island and we get free ice cream and free uh, rides oh, and free, free free hamburgers at Nathan's and stuff, you know, because wow. he was a cop. He was a cop there, but he was easy going, hard worker. He he really <coughs> taught us the whole family to be hard worker. And my mother, you know, save your money, and all great money. Yeah, save your money. Make sure you you, know, you don't piss it away, kind of thing. And, and, come, and pretty much on. the whole family's done good, you know. Come on. Who was more supportive, your dad or your mom? What's that? Who was more supportive in music? Would you oh, my, mo my mother. My your mother. mother. Yeah. <clears throat> my, my mother, she used to sing and all that. My mother had, she had a, a, a pad. Remember the pad, Vinny? Vin Mary, Mary's my name. Rock and roll's my game. She had a, <laughs> she had a pad like that. Um, but you know, you know what's funny though? When, when I, I might have told the story. When I was young, I got out of high school and I was playing. I was playing gigs and you know, weddings, all kinds of stuff. And then I went to work. You know, I didn't go to college. I went to work. I, I come home after work and all week, get up six in the morning, take the train at seven, get there at eight, come back at seven. I get a paycheck, $45 <laughs> you know, after taxes. So so then I would play on the weekend and then make 150 or 200 bucks on the weekend. Right. So finally, after I got fired from two gigs of the day gigs, because I would be sleeping the next day after a gig the night before, I went up to my father and said, hey, Pop, look, what would you do? Work all week and make $45 or work on the weekend. I took out $200 or make $200 cash. He said, I think the weekend. I said, thank you. I just quit my job. I'm doing music for the rest of my life. So that was, that was it. That was the turning point. 1960. That was 1964. I haven't had a day job since then. Wow, there you go. Wow. So here, you have a positive effect on your career. Here's yeah. a That's classic awesome. mom's, mom's story. When I was 16, I hooked up with John Lennon, my, my, my band at the Record Plant Studio. Oh, yeah. and you say that. He used, to hang, he used to hang out with us, and we did hand claps on Whatever Gets You Through the Night. We did three videos with him. And actually, we wound up doing his last live appearance that was on TV, and I was like 16. So I used to sit there and we talk and we're talking about Italian food. And I tell John, I go, yeah, you know, my mother, my grandmother's Italian. They make the lasagna and all this stuff. I said, you know what? I'll have them make you a pan of lasagna. He said, okay. So a couple of days later, I bring him in a pan of lasagna. I give it to him and he takes it away. And then uh, about a month later, come on. Yeah, maybe, maybe a couple of months later, I'm playing the garden a few nights with Rod Stewart. And we had a party after the fifth night at the garden or something. We had a party at one of the trendy places. And John came with, I don't know, it was probably, I don't know if it was Yoko, May Pang or whatever. So my, my mother's at the party with my father. So my mother goes, hey, you know, I made lasagna for John Lennon. Is that him over there? Yeah. He goes, well, I never found out if he liked it. I said, oh, well, let's go see him. And I met John that afternoon with Rod and everything. So I go up and I said, hey, John, it's my, my mother, Mary and Charlie, you know, Vinny's mother. And uh, she said she made you some lasagna. So my mother said, yeah, I made lasagna, John. How was it? He goes, oh, Mrs. Apathy, it was delicious. So my mother says, could I have my pan back? <laughs> <laughs> so Italian. That's so Italian. But we don't know where the pan is to this yeah, day. To we this day. Yoko has it. Oh. Yeah. Yoko has it for sure. We got a further mm -hmm. investigation going on about <laughs> Well, that's why uh, so many Beatles fans hate Yoko because of the pan incident. The pan. There you go. And they think the pan that's broke it. up the Beatles, too. Well, no. The <laughs> no, it was my pan that messed that up. All right, enough of that. Uh, <laughs> the Beatles. That was terrible. Yeah. For 37 weeks, I will say that was my worst one. <laughs> hey, um, was. We're going we're gonna to wind it down, but we do have, uh, we usually wind it down with a question from the audience to both Dave's. Okay. Hey, we forget about it, Dave. Forget about it. <laughs> Anybody forget know what that? What's, what's that from? What's that from? Forget about it, Dave. What's, what's that from? Famous video. Uh, forget about it, Dave. Mm. Oh, forget, forget about David it, Dave. Roth. Yes, no? thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. Roth. Yeah. No. Uh, that was your question. No, our question <laughs> is: If you, either one of you guys, uh, if if or both you guys, uh, um, if you were to cover a Beatles tune, what would it be? If you had to select it today. Oh, man. Tough question. Uh, <laughs> wow. You know what? I, off the top of my head, Helter Skelter. Wow. Of course. Because yeah. ah, it's, 
It's, it's good for you, of course, one, man. because you got it's the black one behind. The... <laughs> wow. That's yeah. a good one. I did I did once a uh, day tripper, and I added double bass to it. Wow. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. 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 So that, yeah, those we, are my we, two. Probably we, Helter we Skelter did, and Day Trip. We did You Can't Do That with Vanilla Fudge. But oh, the first time we did Ticket to Ride and Elna Rigby. But what would you do? Ah. Mr. Amato. Mr. Amato. Uh, drive my car. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, good nice. Well, good one. You got da, 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 oh, da, 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 Cowbell? Cowbell. Right? I played Cowbell with Blue Eyes the Colt at Rock Camp. They were playing really? That song. I said, dude. Buck, can I play cowbell on this? So I got on stage with them and played cowbell. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's like a Don Felder trophy right there. Yeah. I had to do that. So. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. This is Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging, where every Thursday yeah. we get together with the biggest guys and ladies of rock and roll. Dave Lombardo, Dave Amato, Dave Apice, Dave Ap Apice. <laughs> Ron, Dave Onesti. Dave Onesti and his jacket. Yeah. Come on! Yeah. <laughs> Thank Love you guys for coming. Stay. We had we had a good time. Okay. Thank you guys. Next week. Yeah. Who's on next week? Dave. Everybody. Who's on next week? Who's on next week? Uh, I don't remember. Now. I know. I know who's on. You next know. Week. We got all. It's a. It's a radio show. Oh, that's we got, that's we, me. We got oh. uh, Steve Jones used to play with the. Uh, Sex Pistols, who's on KLOS, yeah. and we got uh, Ken Ken Dash uh, Ken Dashow from Q104 in New York, and we got Joe Benson from KLOS, who we all know oh, yeah. Joe Benson. Yeah. What about Joe. Uncle so, Brucey? I thought Uncle Brucey was going to be part of this. Uh, maybe Bruce, maybe yeah. on maybe on the next one for cousin Brucey. Cousin, cousin Brucey, Brucey. Cousin Brucey. Brucey. Uncle, Ted. Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted. Cousin Brucey. Cousin Brucey. Yeah. Take that guys. jacket off. Have a safe yeah. week. Have a healthy week. God bless you all. Yes. Thanks for joining yeah. in. Hanging and banging. Thank, Thank you, guys. Get Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ciao. 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 Set me free.